New reports say the Big Ten is still hunting for schools out west, but I've got another theory as to what might be going on. You are locked on Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Nate Dickinson. Thanks again for tuning in to Locked On Big Ten. Everything you need to know about the conference every day of the week. Coming up on today's show, new reporting says that the Big Ten could be not quite done yet hunting for schools out of the West Coast in the Pac-12 to go alongside USC and UCLA. However, it's not exactly in line with the Big Ten's narrative so far. Let's get into what exactly I think could be going on here in a little bit of a tinfoil hat theory that I've got. But let's get into that in just a second. Also coming up later on today, we're going to talk about a potential rule change for NCAA football that could make Big Ten football even slower. And also get into all the Big Ten news from over the day, of course, too. But let's start off with what's going on here in the Pac-12 and the Big Ten between the schools that could potentially be the next members of the conference. We already know who the next two members of the Big Ten Conference are, of course, USC and UCLA. And Matt Hayes over at Saturday Out West, he also writes for Saturday Tradition, if you're aware of that Big Ten site. The Pac-12 sister site is the one doing the official reporting here, but Hayes again works for both ends, so he is plenty knowledgeable on the subject. His reporting says that out of the schools out there in the Pac-12 that could be available, the Big Ten is looking to add maybe two, potentially up to four of those schools, all names that we've heard before in talking about Big Ten expansion. You've got Stanford, you've got Cal, you've got Oregon, and you've got Washington. According to Hayes' reporting, if the Big Ten could only afford to pull two of those schools when it wants, it would, of course, go with Oregon and Washington being the bigger football draws. But there's still a whole lot of hoops to get through before we get to that kind of a point. So why have this reporting here come out now? The website, Saturday at West, has a number of sources citing different things that the Big Ten could be going after Pac-12 schools sooner rather than later, which, by the way, proves me right from what we had last week when I went into future Big Ten expansion plans. We had other people talking about, hey, Big Ten administrators and heads of schools, they don't want more expansion right now. There was a big divide between Kevin Warren and the Big Ten commissioners about what they wanted to do about the expansion. And it's part of the reason that brought that divide and brought Kevin Warren to leave for the Chicago Bears. That's not something the Big Ten wants right now is more expansion. Well, this reporting says Big Ten may actually want more expansion right now. And it could be going after Pac-12 schools as soon as, again, this offseason or whenever really they could get them. And Hayes also makes a really good point in his arguments for the Big Ten getting more schools in that it needs to ensure its investment, as he puts it. The Big Ten is already in on USC and UCLA. And those two schools, at a minimum, are going to be going to Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota at the shortest of travels to play its closest Big Ten games as it stands. The Big Ten wants to, again, ensure that investment, get other West Coast schools in there so that USC and UCLA have partners and closer opponents that make things a little bit more even. They're even reporting, too, that those two schools, whichever it may be, or four that they take from the Pac-12, could easily take less than an equal share of the Big Ten's new media rights deal, just as long as it's bigger than whatever the Pac-12 works out in its deal, which it's looking like it's obviously going to be. So if the Big Ten can pull two or four of these schools, it seems like it has an opportunity and may pounce on it as soon as possible. However, when I go back and I look at those YouTube comments, those people aren't wrong when they talk about what was going on with the commissioners and Kevin Warren. Those people aren't wrong when they were discussing about how they didn't like how open and big to expansion Kevin Warren was when he was talking. And again, 
I'm sure there's nothing in the Big Ten that's a consensus right now. There's big schools that want certain things and small schools that want certain things as far as expansion goes, as far as the media rights deals go, as far as pretty much everything goes. And there's hardly anything, if anything, that I think they can all agree and come to a consensus on, including whether or not they want expansion right now. However, why then go through the process of be making public the divide between Kevin Warren and the Big Ten. I'm not saying anyone made that public, but it became public that there was a bit of at least a disagreement about having Kevin, how Kevin Warren handled talking about Big Ten expansion. So if that kind of a disagreement can create such separation between a commissioner and the heads of schools, then why does this story come out now? Why are there now sources talking to Saturday Out West and telling that the Big Ten could be looking at other Pac-12 schools right away. Why would that happen right now, given how careful the commissioners or how careful the heads of these schools were with Commissioner Kevin Warren and how they wanted him to handle things before? How could things be so precisely careful then, but then seemingly leaking out right now? My theory is maybe things aren't leaking. Maybe the Big Ten's planting these kinds of stories into the news cycle at the moment because, well, it's also convenient to get into people's heads the idea that they could be going after more Pac-12 schools. The Pac-12 media rights deal also is not done. So just go with me here for a second and see if my theory makes sense. I'm not saying this is what's happening. I'm saying that these are some dots that I see and I'm going to go ahead and connect them and let you know, let you interpret it how you will. So not so long ago, Kevin Warren, as the commissioner of the Big Ten, comes out and says, yes, Big Ten is so pro-expansion. We're looking at more teams. We're looking to get things moving. As Kevin Warren stereotypically did during his time at the Big Ten commissioner, he worked quickly. He was someone who got jobs done, whether it be getting USC and UCLA, getting the media rights deal. He was someone who made moves in the Big Ten while he was the commissioner. There's no doubt about that. So the heads of schools in the Big Ten end up getting a little bit upset with how open Kevin Warren is talking about the idea of more expansion, because apparently not all schools are quite on board with that same expansion. So and end up becoming a divide there. Kevin Warren ends up leaving for the Chicago Bears. So now these heads of schools are in charge and administrators are coming together. So maybe there's just news that leaks out because of that, because of a lack of a central leadership. But at the same time, does it really make sense that the Big Ten wouldn't be careful in that way? So if you assume that the Big Ten at least wanted this to be talked about right now, why would that be? Why would it be that whoever it is that are these sources that Saturday Out West is sourcing, why are those people telling these reporters these things right now? Maybe the Big Ten just doesn't want Pac-12 media deal to be quite as good. And the number has not been agreed to yet. There has been no name signed on the dotted line. So if I'm going to the negotiating table now, if I'm Apple or Ion or whoever else is bidding for these Pac-12 rights, I'm looking at it and saying, your position got weaker than it was yesterday. If I'm looking at a situation where we don't have a Washington or an Oregon in this Pac-12 deal alongside USC and UCLA, or if we have no Stanford or Cal alongside that too, that's a big, big deal. A reminder, four schools, all four of these schools, said that they weren't going to be signing extended media rights deals without an additional out in the contract for them to get out and go to the Big Ten if they pleased. Oregon, Washington, Stanford, and Cal. All four of those schools informed Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyavkov of that last offseason. So if they want out, they want, uh, they, they've already said, they want a way out if they decide that they want out at some point in the future. If the Pac-12's media rights deal is not as good, that makes it a whole lot easier for the Big Ten to snipe away those schools. So if the Big Ten wanted to make that price cheaper for the later date, if it is in fact true that the Big Ten isn't quite at a consensus about expanding again, and maybe they just wanted to say, all right, well, 
we'll want you eventually. So let's make sure we get that price as cheap as we can. I'd go ahead and leak into the news. Yeah. By the way, that uh, conference that you're bidding your media rights money on, we might take a two or four more schools away from there. Just go ahead and think about that when you're making your offers. If I was the Big Ten and I was thinking that far ahead, I'd be thinking that I'd made a pretty smart move right now. Because, again, the Pac-12 is looking like it's a place that it is just barely holding on to try and survive on. And the Big Ten could be taking its next shot soon. However, I could very easily see a situation where the Big Ten is just making a strategy play here and working it down the long run. Again, that's more of a conspiracy kind of thing and more of a when you get into it, X's and O's and, oh, did they do this because of that kind of thing. But at the same time, the fact that the Big Ten would be going for schools right now has been a little bit inconsistent with what we've seen from the actual conference and its leaders, what their message has been. Maybe there are schools who want more expansion right away who are leaking this out as the conference doesn't have that one central figure to speak for it at the moment. But also, maybe it'd be fun too if there was some scheming going on. I don't know, just wanted to throw it out there. So the Big Ten, whether they're going for expansion soon or not, the agreement, I think, the consensus is that there will be more Big Ten schools coming at some point. Maybe they're just driving the price down. But we'll get, of course, more on that when more actually happens. Not a whole lot of uh, speculation. I'm not big on that kind of stuff. But I'll let you know what I'm thinking when I have it. Coming up in just a minute, we're going to talk a little bit more about the NCAA's rule changes coming up for college football potentially and what it could mean for the pace of the game in the Big Ten. Before we do that, though, if you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories that come with it, then you've got to try out a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know a whole lot of people's goals are to get healthy in 2023, myself included. And if you are one of those people and you need that protein to get through the day, you go over to Built.com and get the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. It has everything that you could possibly want or ask for, all packed into one convenient little bar that gets you great taste with less than 130 calories, more than 17 grams of proteins, less than four net grams of sugars and carbs. All that adds up to all of the nutrients that you want and none of the ones that you don't, while getting you great flavors all the time and coming out with new ones all the time when you head over to built.com. So go over to the website to hear what I'm talking about. Or if you're over by a Costco, or I'm sorry, a Sam's Club, you can run and grab a 13-bar box with our hip flavors, brownie batter, and churro. That's over at Sam's Club or at Built.com to check out all the latest that they have at Built Bar. You'll thank me later once you get your hands on. Also, thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from the big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players, too. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. I do want to do a quick update on bracketology before we get into other football talk, because this is usually when we get into the basketball side of things. It is a bit of a shift across the board for Big Ten teams after a whole lot of brackets were updated at bracketmatrix.com. We're now working off of 110 updated brackets at the time of recording here. On those brackets, Purdue is down to an average 1.2 seed. The consensus around a number one seed for Purdue is definitely far from gone. And the Boilermakers, while certainly having themselves a shot to get back into it, have fallen off of a solid one line, if you ask me. I wouldn't put them as one seed, but there are still a whole lot of brackets that have them there. Indiana's on the way up. Their average seed across 110 brackets is a 3.7. Next team up for the Big Ten is Northwestern at a 6.4, Maryland at a 6.6, and Michigan State at a 7.4. Illinois, one of the biggest fallers over the last couple of days. Their average seed is down to a 7.5. Iowa's at an 8.2, Rutgers at a 9.1. And three teams appear in a fraction of the 110 brackets. Wisconsin's in 74 out of 110 brackets, a bit of a shift down from them. Michigan's on the way up, now in 10% of brackets at 11 of 110. And Penn State on the way out in just one of 110 brackets. 
According to Joe Lenardi, in those two teams out, Wisconsin is the last, second to last team in. Michigan is the fourth team out, and Penn State is in the next four out. That's 11 Big Ten teams, at least on Lenardi's radar, for the bracket, for the NCAA tournament. A truly outstanding showing that would be. I'd be happy if the Big Ten can just squeeze 10 in there in either Michigan or Penn State. But we'll see how the last few days here play out. Speaking of how things are going to play out, it could be a lot slower in the Big Ten next season. The official NCAA rules could be changing. Administrators coming together in Indianapolis today to talk about potential rule changes for the upcoming season and a particular emphasis on what they say is wanting to make the game go by faster. And one of those rule changes would be to keep the clock running off first downs in less in the last two minutes of the half. Of course, as you know now, if you're a football fan and you watch the football game or college football, which I'm assuming you do if you're listening to this podcast, at least somewhat, you know if a team gets first down, the clock stops until that ball is set, and then they start the clock going again. This would make things more like the NFL, where after first downs, the clock just keeps going, and then you would stop the clock again like you have been in the last two minutes of each half. And this would, of course, achieve what people are looking for, a faster football game, as there were plenty of people who were upset and pointing out just how long games like the national championship or other big games take. It would not, however, speed up the pace of play. And this is where a Big Ten team should be salivating at the opportunity to get an even longer drive out of whatever it is that you're putting together in your 15-play, 80-yard drives that you get in Big Ten football. I mean, imagine Iowa football. If Iowa football had been able to do this last season with how abysmal their offense had been and just run and run more clock as much as possible when they had the football, I mean, we had plenty of low-scoring Iowa football games last season. They would have been even lower. It's the same thing with, say, uh, Nebraska or uh, Minnesota or anyone who likes to run the football. If you're in the Big Ten, you know how to use the clock. You know how to abuse the clock and make sure that drives take a long, long time. And if the first down clock, if the first downs are not going to stop that clock, then you're just going to get it longer and longer. It won't be a huge difference. And the difference made up in time that we're taking off of the game probably not going to be that huge either. But it could be the difference between a team getting an extra drive or having to hurry things up on the drive before. It could be that kind of a difference in timing. So if you're looking at it from a Big Ten perspective here, if I'm one of the powerhouses in the Big Ten, I don't know how much I'm loving this rule. I mean, like at Ohio State, yeah, you like to run. You like to make a fast offense go. But when you're playing up against some of the other teams in the Big Ten and some of those teams are able to keep it close for a little while, this is where those teams can then slow down the game and keep things potentially close into the fourth quarter and into crunch time. I mean, Iowa is the name that keeps coming to mind, of course, because they are the perfect example of a team that could and would take advantage of being able to run more clock. This offense isn't going to overpower you. So it will just tire you out by staying out onto the field and making sure their defense is fresh and ready to go for you too. I think that out of any conference in the country, if this rule were to change, the Big Ten would be the team that would be, or would be the conference that would be able to take advantage of it the most because these schools know how to run the rock efficiently. And they definitely know how to use the clock, even if you can argue that some coaches' clock management skills at the end of games aren't all that great, you could definitely also argue that every single one of them knows how to make a drive last 10, 15 minutes if they could and if they got the plays in. That's what we're looking at. I'm thinking about drives that last a whole quarter when we're thinking about like a team like Iowa going down and marching down the field now. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting here. And of course, the rule hasn't even been changed yet. But if it were to get changed, I could see the situation. Let's wrap up here on Locked On Big Ten with some news from around the conference. The coaches voted for the track and field indoor athletes of the Big Ten indoor championships earlier this week. Uh, that's a long way of saying we have players of the year in the indoor 
tournament at least. I don't know. Does that make it of the year? The players of the tournament, anywho. But here they are. Wisconsin's Jackson Sharp is the men's track athlete of the championships. Nebraska's Jonah Wilson is the field athlete of the championships. Minnesota's Amira Young is the women's track athlete of the championships. And her teammate Shelby Frank takes field athlete of the championship awards. Other player of the week awards from the day, from the week, announced today. Um, in men's lacrosse record, Shane Knobloch is the offensive player of the week. Maryland's Brett McCarr is the defender of the week. And Maryland's Brian Ruppel is the specialist of the week. In women's lacrosse, Mary, Maryland's Libby May is offensive player of the week. Michigan's Maddie Burns is defender of the week. And Maryland's Shaylin Ahern is specialist of the week. Also, women's basketball, Big Ten voting for its Players of the Year, first team, all Big Ten teams. Caitlin Clark, named Big Ten Player of the Year by the coaches and media. She was also unanimous first team, all Big Ten selection. The other two unanimous selections on both media and coaches polls, Indiana's Mackenzie Holmes and Maryland's Diamond Miller, all well-deserving. In hockey, your three stars of the week, Notre Dame's Drew Bavaro, Minnesota's Mike Custer, and Justin Close from the Gophers as well, making the list. Michigan and Michigan State finished with a share of the gymnastics regular season title. Both finished 8-1 and one in the Big Ten season. And the NCAA is considering, again, rule changes to speed up the game. Three of them, the biggest of them, running the clock after first downs, except in the last two minutes. And we already discussed that. As far as other scores from around the Big Ten, we've got all sorts of games going on, but none really of note in the top 25 to tell you about today. And that's all for making Locked On Big Ten. And that's all for our episode of Locked On Big Ten today. Thank you for making the show your first listen every day. For your second listen, check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus hear from big name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow with more on everything that you need to know on what's going on around the Big Ten. Until then, be sure to follow us on wherever you get your podcasts, on YouTube and on Twitter, too, at Locked On Big Ten. That's one zero at the end, not T-E-N when you type it out. I'm Nate Dickinson at Nate with Sports on Twitter, and we'll talk to you soon.